social creatures we are, most of us would do just about anything to find that one special person with whom to spend our lives. But often the strong need for companionship can blind you to what everyone else sees in that so-called match made in heaven. And that's what our story's about in this episode of Still a Beaver. in the middle of a drought, the newsboy delivers us a wet paper. Oh, that's because he lets his dog carry it in his mouth. I really wish you hadn't told me that. Oh, there's nothing like a big, gundy paper. Oh, you said it. There's so much to choose from. I got dibs on comics. Uh, and I want the business and the editorial section. <laughs> Where's the front page? I got it, Dad. Well, Kip. I'm certainly happy to see that you're finally taking an interest in the problems of the world. Oh, no, Dad. See, Freddie Haskell told me that there's a mistake on the front page that makes a dirty word. Oh, yeah? Where? I'll take that. Want ads? Want ads? Want ads? Uh, travel section. On an around-the-world cruise that leaves on Tuesday. Too bad. I got a dental appointment. <laughs> Grandma, you'd miss our trip to Shadow Lake. Actually, I wanted to talk about that. This family's been going there every year since Harry Truman was in the White House. Aren't you ready for a change? No. no. <laughs> hey, look, the musical Grease is in town. You know, I had to take you boys just so you'll see what life was like when I was a kid. Thanks, anyways, Dad. But I hate those musicals where people start singing when they just want a sandwich. I understand. Kip and I will go. Sorry, Dad. I already have tickets. I'm taking Lynn. Hey, she hasn't given me the money for her ticket yet. I guess it's just you and me, Mom. Oh, Beaver, I'd love to go, but I already have a date to go with Ray. Oh. I better not find out you've got a date. Oh, no, not me, Dad. Although Molly Sullivan has been giving me the eye in the cloakroom lately. Oh, hi, Ollie. Hi, Wally. Hi, Mom. Hi, Bees. Wally? Wally. 
Just the person to go see Greece with me. Hey, that's exactly what Mary Ellen said to me. We're going on Thursday. Well, I guess I could pick up an extra ticket. Hey, that'd be great. Although, who knows where you'd end up sitting. <laughs> Maybe I'll just go rent the video cassette. Beaver, you don't have to stay home. You could get a date. Mom, are we going to start Dad again? I'm a single father, and I'm starting my own business. I just don't have time for a relationship. Hey, why don't you go out on a date first, then worry about a relationship? And I know the perfect girl, Mrs. Rapkin's daughter, Hazel. Her mother tells me she has a wonderful personality. Mom, Hazel Rapkin's a fruitcake. She has several wonderful personalities. <laughs> Get my own date for Greece. Thank you very much. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does this say what I think it says? My goodness. Oh, Mr. Cleaver, I've got a workman putting a refrigerator in the office across the hall. Is there anything you need? Oh, well, I'd like a refrigerator, too. Fine. They're only about $700. Uh, Bobby, wait a minute. Uh, come to think of it, uh, I don't really need... I've got this uh, thermos, and, you know, uh, it, it's a dandy. It keeps things real cold. I've got one just like it. Keeps things pretty hot. Well, I wonder how they know which is which. <laughs> you are so funny. It's always nice to see you. It is? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I was, uh, well, I was kind of wondering. Here's your water, Mr. Cleaver. Oh. Hi, Bobby. Hi, John. Oh. Oh, you know, somebody gave me two tickets to see Grease tonight. Do you want to go? Sure, John. I'll pick you up at 7. Make it 6. I'll fix your dinner. All right. Now, what were you wondering? Oh. Well, um... Uh, next month, the, uh, the first falls on a, a Sunday. Uh, do you want the rent on Friday or, or Monday? It doesn't matter. I'm easy. Bye. Hey, Beef. Hey, Beef. Turn that frown upside down, little buddy. I got just the thing to cheer you up. They finally found your car. Uh, yeah, but I've got tickets to Greece. Forget it. I hate those musicals where people start singing when they just want a sandwich. Mm. That's too bad, because my sister's going to be real disappointed. Violet? She'd like to go out with me? Yeah. I guess she'd be a refreshing change after dating all those New York hotshots. Well, don't be such a wise guy, Clarence. You know, we always liked each other. Violet Rutherford. I haven't been out with her since the prom. Boy, that was really some night. Beaver is going out with Violet Rutherford? <laughs> what she did to him at the prom? But I always thought they liked each other. Oh, yeah. Ten minutes after she got there, she dumped him for some guy with bleach blonde hair who drove a Woody. So that's why Beaver came home early and broke all these Beach Boys records. <laughs> oh, gee, you'd think he'd have learned his lesson. No, where Violet was concerned, he always did have a blind spot. Well, people change. Not the Rutherfords. She always took advantage of him. You know, when they used to go ice skating, she would make him go out on the pond and jump up and down first. Well, she may not be the perfect match for Beaver, but it'll be good for him to go out on a date. Wouldn't kill him to do a little ice skating, either. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Uncle Beaver. Are your mom and dad ready yet? No. Mom can't find a pair of stockings that don't have runs in them. She can't get Dad to shave because he's still watching the football game. Well, they better hurry. Boy, you sure look nice, Uncle Beaver. And you smell good, too. Well, thank you very much. You must really like JJ's aunt if you go around smelling like that. <laughs> well, I must admit, we've always had a certain fondness for one another. Did she really give you a black eye when you were little? Oh, it was just an accident. 
see, my eye kind of got in the way of her fist. <laughs> Can you see this spot on my tie? Don't be so nervous, Uncle Beaver. People are a lot like dogs. They can tell when someone's afraid of them. Are you ready? Oh, hi, Beaver. Okay, honey, let's get you next door. You smell nice. Thank you. Good luck, Uncle Beaver. And don't forget what I told you about the dogs. <laughs> We're going to have a great time tonight, right, Wally? No! Oh. How can I fumble on the two-yard line? Hey, nice cologne, Beef. Thanks, Wally. Oh, well, honey, game over. Nah, yeah, they're down by 40. I figure why torture myself? I'll get it. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hey, Violet and Leticia are in the car. You ready? Oh, I'll get my purse. All right. How do I look, Clarence? Too late to do anything about it now. You look fine, Teddy. I couldn't wait. Oh, Violet. Oh, Teddy! Violet, you remember Mary Ellen, don't you? Of course! <laughs> you were always the cutest couple in school. Third honk. If we don't leave right now, she's gonna drive away like she did after our wedding. You really have a lovely place here. Oh, thank you. It just proves that if you have a little imagination, you don't need a lot of money. <laughs> oh, is that your cologne, Teddy? Yes, uh, it's endangered species. I guess we can drive with the windows open. <laughs> Where have you been, young man? Yeah, we have school tomorrow. Do you expect us to wait up till all hours of the night? I guess I lost track of the time. Well, you could have called, you know. <laughs> go. Terrific. <laughs> Great. Way to go, Dad. See you tomorrow. Come on. Good night, boys. Good night. Beaver, I didn't hear you come in. Got my own key now, Mom. Oh, well, don't mind me. I was just making some tea. Oh, well, then I guess you don't want to report. Ah. Let's not jump to conclusions. Well, you'll be happy and surprised to know I had a very good time. I'm not surprised at all. Does that mean that you'll, uh, uh... Be seeing her again? Yes, Mom. As a matter of fact, Violet's taking me shopping for clothes tomorrow. She says I need more earth tones. She's really something, Mom. She's the one I love. <laughs> Wally, you were right. I'm worried about the beaver. I'm sorry, Mr. Baker, but I'm going to have to cancel your appointment this morning. Uh, emergency surgery. <laughs> Whoops. Here comes the anesthesiologist now. <laughs> Wish me luck. Bye. Hi, Clarence. Any calls? Yeah, Indiana Jones. He wants his suit back. I'll well, have you know your sister picked this out. She has a wonderful eye for fashion. You should take some of her advice. Oh, I can't. You're already taking all of it. Knock, knock, knock. Violet, what a lovely surprise. Well, we've been going out for three weeks. I thought it was time I saw the inside of this place. Just as I thought. What are you doing? I'm well, measuring for new draperies, of course. What new draperies? Oh, well, it's hardly my decision. It is your office. You make the choice. Executive Stripe or Dusty Rose. You know, Clarence, uh, we're a young company and image is very important. 
I think new draperies would be great. You have such a level head on your shoulders, Teddy. <laughs> I don't see why we need new draperies. Oh, would you be kind enough to get me some coffee? <laughs> oh, it's not fresh, huh? Would it be too much trouble? <sighs> Never mind. Oh, no, it's no trouble. Oh, I have to put these in the mail anyway. <laughs> well, you sure got the beaver hopping. Yes. He spoils me. <laughs> you know, I thought I'd miss all the excitement of New York, but Mayfield does have its advantages. Lucky I decided to move back. Yes, it sure was lucky that your old boyfriend dumped you and then fired you from your job. But the last time I worked for my boyfriend. Although, uh, you don't seem to mind having your boyfriend work for you. Oh, Teddy just likes to do little things for me. Ah, oh, he's so sweet. Besides, he needs me. Did you see the way he used to dress? Yeah. He looked fine. Now he looks like a hairdresser. <laughs> Violet, Beaver is my partner and my friend. And I am not gonna stand here and watch you boss him around. What are you gonna do about it, Lumpy? I'll play golf. <laughs> think he's asleep? Yeah, he's too old to be faking. I hate to wake him. This is pretty important. I know. I'll go home and call here and let it ring until he picks it up. It won't work. I unplugged the phone. Oh, well, in that case, I'll go outside and ring the door... Oh, hi, Did you have a nice nap? We didn't wake you, did we? Don't worry. As people get older, they require less sleep. <laughs> so, what's the big emergency, guys? Well, we don't mean to be disrespectful or anything, but it's about our dad, Violet Rutherford. See, well, he's, he's turning into the kind of guy that we don't let sit at our lunch table. <laughs> it's really getting serious. He's bringing her over for dinner tonight. Oh, that is serious. <laughs> Look, guys, your dad's old enough to make his own choices. After all, he doesn't tell you who to be friends with. You do. You won't let me play with Michelle. The amateur barber? <laughs> she did get rid of my split ends. You gotta help us, Uncle Wally, and fast. She's really getting her hooks into Dad. The next thing you know, she'll be horning in on her trip to Shadow Lake. Now, wait a second, fellas. This is your dad's business, and you have no right interfering. The only advice I can give you is to be on your very best behavior tonight. All right. Oh. Kelly, if you need me, I'll be out in the hammock. We're on our best behavior tonight. Dad will think we've cracked up or something. Yeah. Good one, Nick. Come on, Ollie. Let's hurry up and get ready before Miss Rutherford arrives. Hi, Teddy. Violet, you look divine. Oh, Teddy, you're so observant. Mom, look who's here. Violet. Oh, Mrs. Cleaver. You look exactly the same as when I last saw you. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> it's obvious you're not a slave to fashion. <laughs> Appetizer? Oh, no, thank you. Uh, Teddy and I are trying to avoid heavily salted foods. Oh, yeah, Mama. Salt's one of the uh, leading causes of high blood pressure. I know another one. <laughs> Aren't the boys joining us? We sure are, Miss Rutherford. I'm so sorry we weren't here to greet you, Miss Rutherford. What a lovely outfit. Uh, didn't I see it in Vogue magazine? Why, Teddy, what lovely manners your boys have after all. Quite the change from the restaurant the other day when they had straws in their noses. Uh, please excuse that lapse. Uh, too much sugar in our diet brings out the worst in us. Appetizers, boys? No, thanks, Grandma. We're trying to watch our salt intake. 
I really don't use that much salt. <laughs> what you did with the lamb. Last year when I went white water rafting in Alaska, I had something like it out of a can. Alaska? You've been to Alaska? Why, certainly. I believe travel broadens the mind. Oh, me too. That's why we're going to Shadow Lake to fatten our brains. Shadow Lake? We used to go there. Oh, it's great. Boating and fishing and... Frogs. Oh, I like frogs. Uh, but only as an appetizer, never as a main course. You know, Teddy, you really should be using the boys' vacation time for a more educational experience. But we always go to Shadow Lake. It's kind of a family tradition. You could skip a year. It wouldn't make any difference to the frogs. <laughs> oh, I know a trip the boys would love. A tour of Southern Authors Homes. Southern Authors Homes? It's like Faulkner, Fitzgerald, Tennessee Williams. Oh, Dad, can we? I've never been to Tennessee before. Sounds great to me, Dad. <laughs> that does seem like an interesting choice. But I think the boys have their hearts set on Shadow Lake. But I want to see where Uncle Remus lives. <laughs> We're not going to any authors' homes. We're going to Shadow Lake. Well, Teddy, the boys and I agree. You'll see it'll be wonderful. You know, I understand that they have just completely restored William Faulkner's mother's sewing room. <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> Violet, may I speak to you alone? Now, Teddy, I know what you're thinking. It's going to cost more money. Just think how much fun the boys will have bragging about this trip to their friends. Don't worry, boys. Your father just needs a little persuading. I'm glad we're alone. Boy, the way your mother cooks, <laughs> she must have stuck in a salt mine. Violet, I didn't come out here to discuss my mother's cooking. Let's get one thing straight. Where I take my family on our vacation should be my decision. I agree. And as time goes by, you can make all the decisions. When I feel I can trust you. Don't get aggressive with me, Violet Rutherford. I'm sick of you telling me where I can go, what I should eat, what I should wear. <laughs> Don't exaggerate. I'd never have you wear those shoes with that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you ever go out with me if I didn't measure up to your standards? A good question. But I see so much potential in you. I mean, if you don't appreciate my helpful suggestions, why do you go out with me? Well... I guess it's because... you're so convenient. Well, I mean, I wanted a date I was a little shy in that department. All of a sudden, you moved back in, and I had a built-in relationship. Is that what I am, convenient? A built-in relationship? Nothing more than a Friday night TV dinner? Don't get huffy. Oh. I know why you came back. And you've been using me as much as I've been using you. More. <laughs> you know... After you moved away, I often wondered what it'd be like to see you again. How we'd feel about one another. It was nice. For a while. Yes, it was. Thank you, Mother, for dinner. I will. Too bad we're just not cut out for one another. Yeah. Should have learned my lesson at the prom. Did we go to the prom?
remembered a previous engagement. Hopefully it's not opening a charm school. <laughs> I, for one, can't wait to see her again. She won't be back. Chatelaine, here we come! <laughs> I guess you guys are trying to prove a point, huh? What makes you think that, Dad? Oh, little things. Like your sudden interest in the literature of the South. Beaver, I hope you're not too upset about how things turned out. Actually, a lot of good came out of this. I got my feet back in the dating pool, and Violet did help me with one other thing, too. What's that, Dad? I have a much better wardrobe now. <laughs> <laughs> That's assault.